What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 9 of our Go Language uh, tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be covering is more on the web server and kind of serving information back to the browser. Just some basic stuff that we should probably cover before we get into the nitty gritties. So, uh, with that, I'm starting with a blank screen here. Um, I guess it can serve as just kind of a reminder of... Uh, the, the web development basics. But anyways, package main, we're also gonna import um, a couple things. One is the just the format, and then also net slash HTTP. Then we're gonna have func uh, index underscore handler. And in the parameters here, it's W, and then that's a HTTP dot response writer. And then we had R for the request, which is a point through to HTTP dot request. Uh, and now we can begin the function and let's just do format dot uh, f printf uh, using the writer uh, and then hey there for now and then finally uh, we can do our func main empty parms and http dot handle func handle func so let's try our best not to type out uh, swear words <laughs> and uh, index handler and then finally HTTP dot listen and serve uh, you can also if you had like HTTPS for, for example you could listen and serve TLS um, not really going to cover that now but uh, you, that just letting you know that exists uh, port 8000 and then obviously you would serve on a different port but anyway back to what we were doing <laughs> pass nil Go ahead and save that, and let's make sure that runs uh, as we would hope. So go run go tut go tut dot go. Uh, what did oh this comma? That's gonna keep getting me. Cause in Python you got you know you'd have to put in that comma. I'm probably gonna go to Python. Forget the commas. Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, syntax error. Unexpected funk. Expecting. Hmm, it's not jumping out at me what this issue would be. Index handler, pass W, response writer. Uh, okay, format.printf, that should be fine. Main, you handle the func, the index handler. HTTP.listen and serve, port 8000. No, what? Do we use a single quote? Yes, we use single quotes. That's what's getting us. If I would have read the error in full, I would have seen that immediately. All right, let's try that again. There we go, that's gonna work. Allow, and then I'll head to it. All right, we got hey there. So uh, obviously we generally, like that's just plain text. Like if we view the source, it just says hey there. Um, usually in HTML we have things called tags. So what can we do to pass tags? Well, we actually we can pass tags um, oops, just by writing them in if we wanted. So let's just do uh, header one for example, and then I'm just going to restart the server real quick. Maybe I hit allow. There we go. Right, and now it's hey there. And then if we refresh the source, we see us the, the tags actually came through and all that. Um, so then we could add like a few more things, like let's just say uh, maybe two more lines, make this maybe a paragraph tag, and then we'll make this one a paragraph tag, and then we can say go is fast, and simple, like so, and then we can refresh our server, I'm just breaking and restarting it, so control C and then just up arrow to re uh, rerun it basically. And then as you can see, we got that on separate lines uh, and all that, and it works as you would have expected. Uh, the other thing I want to show real briefly is, let's just make another line. And we can do something like this. Like we could say, um, you percent %s even add percent %s comma, and then we can put in what we want to have there. So we could say can and uh, and then we can also say, what did I do here? Oh, okay, I see what I've done. <laughs> strong, strong, and then pass variables. 
So you can even add variables uh, like this using the, the percent %s. So let's go ahead and break this, rerun it. I'll allow it. I wish I didn't have to hit allow every time. Refresh, pull it over, and there you go. Hey there, goes fast and simple. You can even add variables. <laughs> Um, the next thing I want to show though is if we were to view the source here, um, everything's on just like one line, which I mean it's probably not the end of the world, but um, in general we, we would like this to be organized like you would expect, especially when things start get like if you were going to actually code a website doing this, like you probably wouldn't, you'd probably move to using templates, which we'll show at a later time. Um, but if you were doing it this way, it would be very hard for you to debug your own website, especially if you've got issues like you forgot to close a tag somewhere. It's really hard to find it, um, and it's going to be equally as hard to find it if uh, if it looks like that. So, um, so the other thing we could do is you can actually um, do like a multi-line print. So this is true with all the prints. You don't have to use fprint. You could this could just be like a, your typical print line, for example. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is like, let, let's say we wanted this exact same code. Um, so format dot F print F, um, and let's just, we'll just do these first three, I think. Um, and then you can use the little tilde and then you can use that to make a multi-line print. So for example, we could throw in, well, you don't need the quotes. We could throw in, uh, that this and we'll just throw in this one just for just to show it okay we can save that actually i'm going to get rid of these two so we'll save that and then i'll restart the server oops we have a mistake not enough arguments oh we forgot the w the writer try again there it goes refresh and basically kind of the same thing everything's on a separate line and if we were to go view the source you'd see well it's almost good enough but not quite so the issue is um, the tabbing is at least yeah like in the start it's not going to be tabbed weird but then down here in theory these tabs are part of the multi-line so it's thinking you want those tabs so you could get rid of them just by removing the tabs um, but again, that's probably not what you would want either. And so again, I'll just kind of let you know that it does exist that there are going to be HTML templates. And like I said, we can look into those um, later on for solving this sort of a problem. But again, we can view the source, refresh, and there we go. We, we fixed that problem. But it is kind of neat. You could, in theory, do quite a bit of programming and make uh, even some slightly complicated websites just by passing variables just like we've done here and using all the information that we've learned up to this point we could actually make a, a decent website to be honest um, but in general I think you'll find that using templates will be uh, a little easier <laughs> than doing it this way but anyways um, I think that's all I want to really show right now as far as like just kind of adding one layer on top of the stuff that we've seen so far um, in the next tutorial, we're actually going to start um, <clears throat> building our project. So the project that I wanted to do, I just basically wanted to do anything but a blog. <laughs> so, so the project I decided that we, we could do is to basically make like a news aggregator using like a, the sitemaps from a news source. So, um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, and I think that'll kind of allow us to bring in a bunch of concepts that we're trying to learn and at the same time kind of actually use them on a real example rather than something that's like a toy example because uh, a lot of things really do change when you, when you try to go from like a basic example to actually applying it. So, um, so anyways, uh, we're actually going to start building that code that's going to start doing that for us. Uh, we're going to do that in the next tutorial. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.